Hi everyone, my name is Elizabeth, I'm a marine biologist and I go on incredible ocean adventures and today is no different and I am super excited because we are exploring Minster Beach which happens to be the beach that I grew up on as a kid and it is a particularly weird spot. It is sandy, it is muddy, all the stuff that there is slimy and wiggly and weird and if you're ever wondering what type of beach I grew up on to create someone so fascinated by the weirdness and most wonderfulness of sea life, it's this one. <laughs> So, it's a super low time today. Let's head out, let's explore, let's see what we can find. Yes! <laughs> see, that is how far I run the YouTube videos. Because you've got to come back and get the camera. What's the point, right? The tide was incredibly low today and I decided to just hold the camera and time lapse me walking out and just record. It's eight minutes of video. Don't worry, it's not gonna play for eight minutes. I've sped it up, but it took me eight minutes to walk, not even to where the sea was, but just like far enough out. I think that's absolutely mind blowing. If you think that that much land is exposed at low tide and sure it is a, a lower tide, but all of the creatures that live on this whole bit of land are having to adapt to being out of the water for a decent chunk of time like maybe at least an hour at the lowest kind of points-ish, maybe a bit less, to uh, a couple of hours closer to the beach. I just think that that is incredible and amazing that in just a pair of wellies, we get to access this, get to experience life on a sandy shore for just a little bit of time. And I'm so excited in this to see what we find. All alone, there's no one here beside me. My problems have all gone. This is a spring tide, which means that the tide goes out extra far. And just look how much land is exposed. Look how much beach, look how much there is to explore. This is absolutely incredible. Now you might be asking, why am I not going right to the edge of this beach? Will you see how flat this land is? Tide is measured in centimetres, so say this tide goes out 20, 30 centimetres more than usual, but 20, 30 centimetres, it will come back in that far, that quickly. And actually, if you measured the elevation like this, 20 to 30 centimetres, because it's so shallow, is a lot of horizontal distance. And I know this beach, this tide, any second is going to start racing back in. And what I want to go explore is the weird stuff in the sand from about here, back to those rocks and see what we can come up with. I have no idea if you can hear me because it's a bit windy because we're so far out, we've just lost the cover of the land. I'm gonna record for it now and hopefully this will appear, but you can see all the way around to the docks over there, all the way across, over here is Essex coast. Out there is the is uh, the wind farms and the old guns from the world wars, and that there is the other. Get focused. That there is the other end of the island. So we have genuinely lost. <laughs> like we have genuinely like come walked so far out that we are now like off any cover that you get from the island. It's incredible. And I'm going to head back in now and I am going to um, go explore what wonderful sea creatures we can find before they re return to our wonderful ocean. It's so windy out here. Oh my goodness. This is an incredible area though, full of these incredible rocks. This landscape, this whole beach changes continuously. Every time I come down here, the sand's a bit different. Sometimes it's really exposed and these big sand beds that are like kind of under this like silty, uh, silty, slimy kind of sand are exposed. Sometimes it's all the slimy, slimy, silty sand. But what is consistent is that there is this kind of cluster of rocks around here that don't particularly move and kind of form these indents and pools which is really great because this is where I find some really incredible, awesome and weird sea life. But you shouldn't underestimate just how much is like actually out away from these rocks. Just walking along, you can find anemones and starfish and I found sea slugs and whole swarms of these gorgeous sandworms that look like underwater cities. A sandy shore might look plain from afar, but it's absolutely incredibly filled with life. Um, but it is quite early, this is, this is in April. 
so quite early on in the year and as we go through into summer all these sands just become full of tiny fish and tiny living things and because the chances of me seeing stuff out on the sand today is a bit more slim because when there's less stuff around and loads of lovely seabirds things are much more cryptic they're trying to hide they're trying to be not seen they're trying to avoid humans but as we get on in summer there's just so much life that there's a bit less risk so things are out and about and thinking well there's a thousand of my cousins out there maybe one of them will get eaten so it's like just um yeah so I'm gonna edge my bets and try these pools first and if we've got more time we can go out and see if we can find the other stuff so I'm gonna get my phone out to film the phone's eye view see if we can shimmy this rock to be honest we might just end up Either it might be too heavy, which I wouldn't be surprised, and or, um... oh, like this. What the hell are you? I know what you are. You're an anthropod. Oh, you're so weird. Oh, my God. This is, see, I said don't underestimate the rocks. And the sandy shore just turns around and goes, yeah, that's fair. Oh. You know what, I don't actually think there's a need to pick them up. So this is an amphipod. If you know woodlice or peely bugs, or they've got loads of different names in, in around the world, the little bugs that roll up into a ball, this is one of those. Well, no, it's not actually. That's, <laughs> that's an isopod. If you imagine, and maybe I'll get a diagram up, so if you imagine a ball of clay like, like, looks like this, and you squash it from above and below, it goes like this. That's an isopod. That's like a peely bug walking along that rolls up into a ball. If you have this ball of clay and you squash it like this to either side and it goes like this, that's what an amphipod is. It has two eyes on the end here and is a bit more like this way up. And so they're, uh, they're similarly related, I think, but um, that's the best way to tell the difference apart between the two of them. But that's really cool. Oh, I love how, see, you'd never underestimate the ocean. Ah, oh, these things are really cool. So these are the eggs of the green leaf worm. Yes, this is what I wanted. So no. Oh, wait, they are. What a beauty. You gonna move for me? <laughs> Why is it worth looking under these rocks? It's that I have consistently found sea spiders here. I love them. They are, they look really creepy, but they're not actually spiders. They look much like a spider. They're a pycnogonid. And from what I can remember what pycnogonid means in Latin, I think it's Latin, it might be Greek, but I think it's Latin is um, it's basically legs and gonads. And all they are is that they have all the reproductive organs on their legs and they have a tiny little body and they go around hunting things. Now what they hunt is these tiny little bryzoans and hydroids, things that basically are animals, that, but they're crusty and they stay still. And I'm gonna see if I can get this little guy on my finger, but I don't wanna hurt him. So unless he wants to deliberately crawl on it, I'm not gonna like, they're just so incredible and they're so cool. And there's also a really cool anemone that's here and it's nice and stripy. So I'm gonna, I can't remember off the top of my head which anemone that was. It might be a daisy anemone thinking about it. But I'm gonna go have a look when I'm editing this in my anemone book and get back to you about what this cool stripy anemone is. Before I put this rock back, just some of the other things that are on here. There's the anemone, there's the sea spider. We've got another one of those green eggs from the green leaf worm, a baby mussel, uh, some oysters. I think they're the invasive type of oysters, some old shells and some new ones, and some old barnacle shells. I imagine because the rock has been flipped over on the bottom, barnacles can't actually filter feed within the mud. They need to be like on a rock with the water flowing past. So these are probably from when, oh! Hello! Beautiful. Oh, you. Right. Excuse me, sir. You can't tempt me. 
and then disappear. There is a nice grab in this pool, but it is super quick and it decided to disappear back into the mud where I can't see it. You know what, I'm gonna turn these tiny rocks over and let that fit. I don't wanna turn the rock back over and squish him. So I'm just gonna give him a second to... Oh, there's another sea spider. That one is amazing, wow. Lots of nature happening at once. I love it. Okay, this, look at this is for a sea spider. Oh, this is huge. Wow. Wow. Hi, friend. Look. See, that's how big they are. That's quite a chunky boy. Gonna turn him back over. Make sure that he can. Stay nice and safe. It's hard to film underwater here because there's not like a lot of depth. The pools only get to about like one camera deep. But I do just want to show you like the underwater world, but like how much stuff there still is growing on these rocks in these sandy environments. They are caked with a load of different life. And how different it must seem to be, you know, part of that underwater world. I mean, this rock just looks so scrumptious to turn over, doesn't it? It's just calling out to be flipped. <laughs> because it likes to pull practical jokes. And I can't see too much living right on the bottom of that. Sometimes they like to lie to you. What? There is lots of this stuff under it. So this, look how long this is. This is a, um, I always do two takes of this, if I'm honest. It's either a bryozoan or a hydrozoan. I keep forgetting. And, and this whole thing here looks like just one bit of seaweed. But actually, this is an animal. And this animal, like, forms a whole colony that just looks like this stunning, beautiful plant. But actually each little individual dot on this is its own animal and they join up to form this big kind of colony to help them survive out here and you'll find so many of this species on this beach but i often don't find them at that many like that big or elsewhere that often and they just form these just absolutely stunning stuff and what i love is that this really looks like a plant you really would just pass this along and think wow that's an interesting growing seaweed but no this beautiful symmetric -y, well i don't even know if it's symmetric but just gorgeous structure is an animal it's so cool sea life's amazing now i don't know about you but i am ready to find something super weird so let's have a look Oh wow, I have never seen a shell with that coloration before. Wow, I wonder what that is from. I mean, part of me would say that that would be a paint, but it really looks part of the shell. What? What is making that shell that colour? 
Whoa. That's beautiful. Jeez. Oh, and in here, these are bryozoans. So all this here are little, tiny little, each dot is a little animal just living on the inside of this shell. Oh, wow. And this is a tube worm. I don't know if there's one in there. I think so. That's a stunning, stunning shell. I then came across this little chitin on a cockle shell, which I just thought was really awesome. You know, in this environment where hard surfaces are limited, it's mainly sandy and soft, and chitons like to live on a rock or a hard structure because they're a bit like a snail, so underneath that they've got like a, the foot of a snail, and they grip on really tight to hard surfaces. And so it's just found this cockle shell that's not being used, not occupied, and I settled on there, which was really cool. But as I did that, I noticed something move and you can barely see it. So I try and like get it to move here. See, it just moves then. It's incredible. This is actually, can you spot it? A brown shrimp and they blend in so unbelievably well with the sand. Its head is kind of pointing towards me all the way back to its tail. It's incredible that it's just hiding there and who knows what other amazing sea life is just hiding in every bit of camouflage sand. Amazing! Also think it's really just worth mentioning the incredible diversity of seaweeds that are here. Now I don't actually live in Kent so I don't usually tend to bring my seaweed book back with me but one day I'm gonna have to because the amount of different seaweeds here are incredible. I know a few and I can tell the difference between each different species but to name them all there is just too many. And just to think these are a couple of rocks on a patch of an incredibly vast amount of beach. It's incredible just to think and take that in. And this is what I love to show about sea life is that really it's so competitive and they adapt so well that you can just find ways to live in different environments. Like the chitin that was living on the cockle shell, you know. Sure, there's not a lot of rocks around here. So what's the next best thing? Cockle shell, sorted. <laughs> I love it so, so much. Um, and I just think it's stunning. It's just beautiful and stunning because if you came here and just looked and thought, eh, it's a brown, muddy environment. What is really here? There is just life around every corner, pops of color. It's just stunning and gorgeous and I love the fact that I got to grow up here. I am so grateful for it every day because really this beach helped shape me and helped shape my life because I just constantly spent my time going. And now that's literally just what I do as an adult, so. See, it's coming back in now. It's going to come in pretty fast, so I'm going to keep heading backwards. It's already kind of getting to back where the rocks were, but we explored some amazing and incredible things. That was so, so, so much fun. I love the sea spiders. I love just that hidden shrimp that made me jump. I can't believe I got, I, I, I lost a crab. I couldn't catch a crab. That never happens. Oh, you can tell it's early in the rock pool season. I've got to step up my game. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video, everyone. I've had an absolute blast. And I will see you next time with another video. Bye, everyone. A massive thank you to my Patreons and you can head over there to access exclusive content and get your own digital illustration to add to our online rock pooling wall.